Well, welcome to the third part of my video. In this part, we're looking at the line from Much Wenlock up and through Much Wenlock Edge and down to Craven Arms. Described by many as one of the most scenic railways in the country. It's an interesting line because it's up inclined all the way from Much Wenlock and then cuts through the very scenic Wenlock Edge. I've come about a mile north of Much Wenlock and I'm at a very remote location. Well, I've come about half a mile south and here you can see a stretch of the line that's very rarely seen. You can hardly tell down there that this was the old course of the old railway. I've come right off the beaten track to get here. Well, I've just come north of Prestope. Somewhere in that jungle of trees and growth and rocks is the entrance, the east entrance to the tunnels. I can't get any further because there's a big sign next to me saying trespasses will be prosecuted, so I won't go any further. Originally the line just came from Much Wenlock. In its early days, when it was first opened, the last link of the chain, it actually only came up to Westward, which is not far from here, because the local landowners uh, here in Prescott here uh, objected to the line, and it delayed the line by some four years. And it was 1867, I think, before the line actually opened all the way. The line, in fact, changed course. It was meant to run down the south side of Wenlock Edge, the east and south side of Wenlock Edge, but then the tunnels had to be built um, to avoid the land on this south side. Well, welcome to the top of Wenlock Edge. And just look at these amazing views you get looking west. You can see Caradoc Lawley, and to the right we can see the Stiper Stones. This is an interesting point which I've got to. This is called Major's Leap. Not far away from here is an old Elizabethan house, now a youth hostel called Wilderhurt Manor. It was owned by a man called Thomas Smallman. But he was a royalist in the time of the Civil War. Oliver Cromwell's men were after him. They surrounded Wilderhope Manor. But he had just escaped on a horse just before that. Realising they'd been tricked, Cromwell's men chased him up the hill, up Wenlock Edge, on a horse. And he came to this point. And here, he jumped off the hill on the back of his horse and fell and rolled right down the hill. The horse was killed, but Major Smallman hit an apple tree and survived. From here he fled northwards and evaded Cromwell's men. That's a true story and this point here is now known as Major's Leap. Well I'm deep here in the undergrowth and the entrance to the tunnel is just below me here. It's just at this point we're thinking about the uh, incredible persistence of the Victorians. They get a route blocked off and uh, what seemingly seems the end of the line at Prestope, uh, well no object seems to be a barrier. So what do they do? Build a tunnel right through this hill. Nothing seemed to stop the Victorians in their quest to get the line built. And from this point here it goes down through East Hope Wood, down into Longville. I still find it incredible their desire for tunnels. Um, the thought of going through a smoky tunnel is not particularly appetising at the best of times. I always wonder what it would have been like to have been stuck in a tunnel with, in a smoky train. Because um, train, there must have been times, and many a times, when the trains got stuck in tunnels and the steam and the smoke was bellowing. Uh, as much as I marvel about these railways, a smoky train in a tunnel is not something I would fancy very much. Well, as you can see, I found the south portal of the tunnel. I was looking from up there, which is why I couldn't see it very well. I knew it was there, but I couldn't see it very well. But here you can see the south portal of the tunnel. Now this tunnel went for 276 yards, I believe. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the far end is blocked up. I'm certainly not going to attempt to go down it. From this point, going southwest, the track follows a nice wide berth. As you can see, a very shallow gradient down, almost flat from here. Now one of the problems with exploring um, this line from which Wenlock up to Craven Arms is how little of it is accessible to the public. Very, very small part of it is on public footpaths. This walk now down to East Hope is only one of a few places where you can actually get on the line. So I'm now going to walk down to East Hope on this really accessible part of the track.
Well, I've come about a mile and a half down the track and we've reached East Hope. And here at East Hope we still have the old viaduct. And just past the viaduct, as far as I'm aware, is where East Hope Holt was. Now East Hope Holt was, was around where these trees are now. An interesting thing about seeing these trees is actually this line was originally planned as a canal and that was to get the, the trees to Telford and other areas for the mining industry. I've got a picture here in the book of Longville Station in 1951, which was the last year of the passenger services. This picture shows it in rack and ruin at the back end of 1992. Overgrown and very shabby. And the station's been fantastically restored into a private residence. The station sign, of course, has been moved. But a fantastic residential home now. Now, Longville was an important point on the line because the passenger services ceased in 1951. But however, freight trains continued to this point, And there were quite a few freight trains that came here, mainly because of the farming industry, uh, wood, cattle. Uh, there was a mushroom train, but also a postage train. And so the, the freight trains, in fact, continued running on here from 1951 right up to 1962 before the line was completely closed. One of the interesting stories is people still continue to catch lifts on the train, on the freight trains, to, to here. So the funny thing was, it was that the, uh, for a couple of years, between 51 and 53, the, um, the, the passenger service remained on the British Rail timetable, even though it actually officially had ceased. Well, I've now reached the next village and next station down the line from Longville and I've arrived at Rushbury station. Now this section of the line hasn't seen a train since 1951. The track pathway is still very clear and very evident. And in my book I have a picture of Rushbury station as it was. In fact this picture was taken in 1951 and if you can see that the track's just been pulled up. Now this picture was taken by the bridge which I'm standing on now. From here if I look towards the station all I can see is trees now. And there you can see up the drive is Rushbury Station, beautifully restored, just like Longville. Well, I've reached the next village down the line, down the Apedale towards Craven Arms, and this is Eton. And you can see the Eton viaduct here, which sadly hasn't survived the test of time, unfortunately. Well, I've come to the site of the last station on the line before it reaches Craven Arms, and that's Harton Road. I've got a picture here in the book of Harton Road Station, just after the track was pulled up. It looks very similar to Rushbury Station, and that's on this stretch here. Although this part of the line stopped in 1951, actually the tracks did survive a bit longer here than they did at Rushbury, because they used this part of the line as a bit of a shunting yard because it's just off the Hereford Shrewsbury line and so a lot of carriages were put up here and shunted and the line actually survived a few years before it was pulled up. Now I've reached the village of Henley which is only about half a mile from the end of the line and this is the last point at which I can pick up the track. Well, I've reached the final destination, which is Craven Arms Station. Trains are on this line between Manchester and Cardiff. I didn't quite find where the lines joined. It was too difficult. There was no obvious footpaths or places to get, to get to it, so it was very difficult. It was pretty close to the last location I went. Well, that's the end of the journey. I think I've enjoyed this railway exploration more than the other two, particularly trying to discover all those tunnels in much Wenlock Edge. And also the visit to the Telford Steam Railway was also another highlight. Let's hope that in the future, their intention to get the line all the way down to Ironbridge comes to fruition. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, I'll be planning my next journey in the near future.